Good day, and welcome to our quarter two, week two, and it's about the art of East Asian countries pertaining to China, Korea, and Japan. Let's start and see their visual arts. Meanwhile, before we start, let's define art. This art refers to the visual arts, which cover the creation of images or subjects in fields including painting, sculpture, printmaking, photography, and other visual media. The art form is an activity or a piece of work that can be regarded as a medium of artistic expression. Let's start with the East Asian arts of China. Now, in China, there are three concepts of Chinese arts. First one is nature. The nature has always been regarded as an element of utmost importance in East Asian countries. Another concept of East Asian art is the heaven. And the last concept is the humankind. Like the idea of yin yang, the concept of balance. Now, another type of Chinese art is what we call the woodblock printing. This is a technique for printing text, images, or pattern. Remember that during the old times, printing is done manually. This woodblock printing originated in China as well. Here is the sample of woodblock printing. Again, woodblock printing is another technique for printing text, images, or pattern used widely throughout East Asia. It originated in China, but it eventually became a printing method for paper during the old times. The woodblock printing started in China. This method was adopted in Japan during the Edo period in 1603 to 1867 and became one of the oldest and most highly developed visual arts. It is best known and most popular style of Japanese arts. Ukiyo-e means picture of the floating world. Usually, art of paper classes and royalty before. Japanese painting and later print making are the depiction of scenes from everyday life and narrative scenes that are often crowded with figures and details. Another famous Japanese art is origami, or the art of paper folding. Ori means folding and kami means paper. It started during the 17th century but became popular in the mid-1900s. The most popular origami is the paper grade that believes to be granting wishes. After China, Japan, now let's go to Korea. Korea is famous for their nut tai. They called it made up. In China, they called it zongbu, and in Japan, it is hana musubi. In Korea, decorative nut work is known as made up or fold the ray. Now, let's go back to China. Let's talk about their painting. Landscape painting is regarded as the highest form of painting in China. Silk is the primary medium in painting, meaning they use silk as their medium or the material where they paint.
The Chinese painting subjects usually are the flowers, birds, and landscape. But did you notice some writing in the painting? That is called calligraphy. Calligraphy is the art of beautiful handwriting that was preserved as the part of the Chinese culture. Another Chinese painting themes and subjects are the palaces and temples and some human beings were also part of their painting. The invention of paper in China was made by Kai Lun. This led to the development of a more economical medium of painting because silk is very hard to produce during that time. The official national animal of China is the giant panda, and no wonder it became one of their subjects in painting. These playful giants love to munch of the tall grass of bamboo as well. That's why it became the subject or theme in the paintings of China. And some additional information. For Chinese painting, we have the six principles of Chinese painting according to Xie. The first one is to observe the rhythm and movement. The second one is to leave spaces for the eyes to rest. And the third one, they have to use brush for calligraphy. The fourth one, use colors correctly. Fifth, is to live up to tradition by copying the master's artwork. The last one, they have to copy the correct proportion of the objects and nature. For the Japanese painting, it reflected a refined and serene dignity is valued not only for its simplicity but also for its colorful exuberance. Now, for the Japanese painting subjects, they love scenes from everyday life. Another one is the narrative scenes, crowded figures, and details. For Korean painting, Korean painting have subjects such as landscapes, facial features, Buddhist topics, and emphasis on celestial observation in keeping with the rapid development of Korean astronomy. Mountains and water are important features in Korean landscape painting because it is a site for building temples and buildings. For Korean subjects of painting usually are landscape, minhwa, the traditional folk painting, another subject are the four gracious plants, these are the plum blossoms, orchids, chrysanthemums, and bamboos, and also the bamboo itself. Also, their portrait of the nobles of some official in their government is part of their themes and subjects for painting. That's all for today. See you next week.